Well, hey kids, welcome back. I did it again. Got a new vehicle to add to the fleet. You may not have heard of this one before. An Oldsmobile Forenza. Let's check it out. All right, so here we go. What you're looking at right there is a 1979 Oldsmobile Starfire Forenza. Uh, pretty cold here in uh, central Indiana. Um, wanted to kind of pull it out side so you could kind of check it out, but eh, we're gonna we're gonna try to get around it here in the shop so you can see it. Uh, I think you can get the the general idea of what what we've got here. Um, and I may move, move some stuff to give you some better shots because uh, kind of cramped quarters where I've got it parked right now. But um, car runs and drives. Um, got its, you know, used car kind of issues. Uh, but what's a, uh, what's a Forenza? Or what's a Starfire for that matter? Well, we'll start there. Um, Starfire is a, uh, a model that uh, the greatest GM division ever, Oldsmobile, has used uh, on and off for for a while. Um, kind of started out on their uh, senior compacts, as I believe they're called, related to the Corvair, which I also have. And uh, as usual for Oldsmobile, had quite a few technical innovations. Um, Kind of ran its course with that, and then uh, here comes the uh, the fuel crisis, and uh, Chevrolet makes a little car called the Vega, and uh, internally platformed as the H body. And while it was a really a pretty pretty ingenious design, and uh, done by the or spearheaded, I guess, by the the great John Z. DeLorean, love him or hate him, I think he was pretty significant. Um, you know, it had its issues, as a lot of cars from the era did, and uh, kind of got a bad reputation. Well, you can't you can't just throw all that tooling in the trash. So, what did they do? Uh, you know, five years or so later, they said, "Let's just kind of reskin this thing and make it uh, make it something else." So, you had gave birth to the Monza, and that was the Chevrolet version. Well, they pulled out all the stops with the Monza design because they they basically kind of made it a an affordable Ferrari. If you look at, I think it's a 365 GTB4 or something like that, you, you can definitely see the influence. In any articles of the day, they mention it that, yeah, you know, this was kind of inspired by it. Um, you know, they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery, but, uh, you know, maybe they copied it. Who knows? Who cares? But, uh, you know, that's something that's out of reach for most people. When you get this really, really elegant looking fastback design, on here and if the biggest thing I think is this window here the window treatment uh, that's that's right off the Ferrari the way that is it kind of wraps around the whole kind of shape of the greenhouse the rest of it yeah not so much but um, I'm talking about Monza here well we're also talking about GM so what does GM tend to do that kind of wrecked itself well instead of making unique divisions unique models in each division they basically did what's now known as badge engineering, where they would come up with one platform and they would just put different stickers on it, more or less. Um, that's kind of what killed them, you know, because when you can buy a Chevy optioned out like a Buick, why would you pay more for a Buick? And they needed to sell Buicks because Buicks made more money. So they kind of kind of knocked themselves out of the picture with a, with a lot of that stuff. Now, you know, Oldsmobile was in a unique situation because uh, Oldsmobile's up in Lansing, and they always kind of did their own thing. Um, no, no real difference here with uh, with the Starfire. Um, Starfire has its own special nose, and the other ones kind of, you know, kind of parts bin things. Uh, they they had their own trim too. I mean, there's a, a Pontiac version called Sunbird, and the Buick version called the Skyhawk, but. Uh, Oldsmobile 
definitely was kind of trying to make their stuff unique a little bit um, because they could, because they've always kind of been innovators. And uh, what, uh, what ended up happening was uh, kind of eh, about the middle of the run of the Starfire. They said, we need something super special out of this. Let's make the Forenza model. And so I would say the Forenza is kind of like the the Trans Am, if you want to talk in Pontiac terms, of Starfires. It's the top trim level. Um, this car is missing some of the pieces. Uh, it should have wheel flares. You can kind of see where the tape striping kind of stops here um, because there was a wheel flare that went here uh, on all four wheels, and there was a special air dam on it. And uh, I've got one of the wheel flares. Um, you know, one of the rear ones, they're not sure what kind of, kind of plastic it is. It's a, it might be that Enduraflex, you know, kind of twisty, rubbery kind of stuff like the, the nose pieces on some cars are and bumper covers are, but, uh, it's really kind of just not compound curves. It's a lot of just arced shapes. So I think I can reproduce the other one, just make a mirror image of it out of metal. So that's that's the plan. If not, we'll we'll figure something out how to cast one and make it. Cause uh, you're not gonna find one. Reason being, total total production for these things is like 3,500. So, uh, not many of them left around. Uh, the unique thing about this car is uh, it's a V8. It's a factory V8 that that's verified. Uh, supposedly a four speed. Uh, kind of looks like it might have been. Right now, it's got a 700R4 in it, but um, I've got an original four-speed, an original pedal set, because this one's been kind of goofed up. They've, like, taken the clutch pedal out of it, and um, so we can put it back the way that it was. The engine was a 305 originally, and uh, that's long gone, but that's okay. Um, you know, this isn't like a Hemi Cuda or something like that, um, at least not yet. And uh, this is a one-handed operation here that may be difficult. Uh, currently, it has a uh, a 350, and that's that's verified. It's uh, an like a 71 four bolt main 350. If uh, you know that turns you on or not. Uh, some stuff's really nice, and some stuff is a not so nice in here. They they you know they spent some money. You get a complete MSD ignition system here. You got the control box, coil, distributor. Uh, got a Edelbrock intake, Edelbrock performer carburetor, uh, I'll put on there, uh, you know, properly-ish, and the rest of the stuff, not so much. I mean, we got, um, you know, that, that's our heater control valve, how about that? That's fancy, right? Lots of zip ties, hose clamps, craziness going on everywhere. Yeah, just couldn't get that alternator to work right. Uh, can't explain it. Uh, Yuck, you know, look at some of the wiring there. You know, can you say fire hazard? Uh, you know, we're not we're not gonna take this on any long distance trips with things like that. I need to check it over. She definitely marks her territory when she's sitting around uh for a little while. Uh, but you know, I don't have a problem with that. I mean it's it's a small block Chevy. I mean it's easy to work on, you know, they got their they got their strengths and weakness weaknesses. I've I've had a, a lot of them to know where where to focus on, you know, what, what's going to break down. So we can get that straightened out. Um, interesting to note that, you know, yeah, it's a small block Chevy and that was kind of a, a Forenza thing. I think, uh, I think you get a V8 or V6 Forenza too, but, uh, if you believe the forums, this might be the reason why the Oldsmobiles are not as common as the other four versions of this H body Monza type platform, you know, Monza Sunbird, Skyhawk, and then the Oldsmobile Starfire. Uh, Oldsmobile people were pretty loyal, and uh, I think they expected a, a Rocket V8 in there. And it's not as easy to package as a small block Chevy is, and they already had this set up, so they just didn't do it. Um, that, I, I think there might be some validity to that but you know it's it's hard to tell regardless there's just not a lot of these around and uh i don't think any of these monzas are 
H bodies, starfires, whatever you want to call them. I don't think any of them have a stock gas cap. Uh, you know, because I could just come up. This is the era when people were stealing fuel. Um, I know that seems alien to people now, but they did used to uh, go around and steal gas when you couldn't get gas uh, during the during the crisis, crises. You know, one of one of two, uh, they'd get a siphon hose and still still fuel out of your tank. You know. People started buying locking gas caps, and the stock one that was on this probably uh, probably went uh, into the trash can when uh, Jimmy Carter was president. Uh, not not sure, but uh, it's uh, it's not easy to get one. Uh, I don't care. You know, we'll do something custom. I mean, the locking ones are okay, and I do have the key for this, thankfully. But um, yeah, they're just kind of it's kind of a hassle. So we'll we'll do something different. But um, this is this has definitely been kind of kind of goofed with a little bit. You can see, you know, those are not the stock wheels. Those are um, center line, which uh, you know I, I really like center line. Unfortunately, they're no longer with us. But um, I think it says something star, Royal Star. Yeah, Royal Star on there. Uh, center line Royal Star, which. I don't know what the heck that is. If you look these up online, I see them called hatchets. And uh, that sounds a whole lot cooler than uh, Royal Star. But, uh, yeah, these are these are four-lug wheels. They're like four-on-four, four, which is kind of an oddball. So um, I don't know what we're going to do with the wheels. I think it kind of suits the car. I don't really care for the rubber rake that it has. If you don't know what that means, I mean, they're basically kind of lifting the back of the car with a, a taller, bigger tire. And sometimes that looks cool, but on this one, if you get pretty far behind it, it's such a short, narrow car, it it kind of looks like it's, uh, you know, an elephant on roller skates or something like that. It looks kind of funny. So I like to maybe like to let the back end down a little bit. Plus, when you got two different size tires, front and rear, it makes it real difficult to carry a spare. And this one doesn't have one at all. So I don't like, I don't like driving without a spare. Uh, if you've ever seen, you know, adventure in babysitting, you know, you get a, you get the lesson from the the record driver with the 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 hook for hand you know you, you kids driving on the on the uh, parkway with no no spare you're crazy you know that that's me you know don't go out without a way to get back home um one of the other things is kind of a bummer i guess not not the end of the world is the forensics had a special uh sports steering wheel it's kind of like the, what a lot of the other cutlasses had 442s performance automobiles stuff like that um but it's a smaller diameter so it's only on these cars well it's long gone somebody put this grant steering wheel on here which these are okay of course they put it on upside down but um it's it's missing i'll probably never get another one but i i want to get something that looks like it belongs in this car a little better um had the door open a second ago open it back up Again, this is pretty much as I brought it home. So there's garbage and trash and parts and things that aren't don't even go to the car in here. Um, look at that, man. Wind up windows, all right. Um, but tilt steering, um, kind of a weird weird combo there. I don't know if somebody ordered this that way or maybe that was part of their friends' package. Not sure, but um, I remember these for sure. My dad had a Sunbird. Um, 77 sunbird and uh they're they're a good looking car too but it had the same kind of thing here this sort of theft deterrent lock where the push button wasn't up on the door because you know people take a coat hanger and slide it in and hook onto those and unlock the door and steal your car or steal your stereo or whatever the case may be um this made it much much harder but uh, i do remember he was able to get into it one time he figured out how to bend a coat hanger and hook it and pull it forward down the side and get break into his own car so I thought that was like a magic trick when you saw that happen. But, uh, yeah, you know, typical GM stuff, all the grease is dried up, and these are really stiff, you know, so you got to watch because I don't want to have to break. I don't want to have to break into this thing myself. But uh, you see the Starfire badging um, because they made lower trim trim levels of this too. I think they made a GT and an SX. Uh, my good buddy had a, a green with green interior, um, 76, the one uh, – before this had a different nose piece the this was new for 79 this uh two headlight system on the front 
His had four headlights, more like a like a Cutlass of the Year, or more like my 76 Cutlass. And his had a um, Buick V6 3.8 and a manual. And I'll tell you what, with the, with the V6 in it, it was still, it was a lot of fun. And uh, he certainly made his fair share of trouble with it. But, uh, yeah, this, this is V8. Um, who knows the output of that engine? It's definitely not stock. I mean, you can hear it's got a, it's got a rumble. We'll fire it up here in a little bit. Um, so it's, it's got a, a performance camshaft in it. Um, who knows the output, you know, you can't really believe the seller, what they're going to tell you until it has, you know, 500 horsepower or something crazy like that. But, um, you know, probably not, you know, not even close to that, but, uh, who cares? Like I said, this is going to be my daily driver. The other thing is it supposedly has a 410 with a spool in it. Now it's definitely locked in the back. I'll tell you that. Um, whether that's really a spool or somebody's welded the spider gears, I do not know. Um, kind of, kind of makes it a little sketchy on anything but dry pavement or e even then that's a little sketchy, but, uh, we'll make it work. Like I said, uh, they do make a spool for this little seven and a half inch, uh, ring gear differential. I was, I was shocked. So he, they might not be, uh, you know, pulling my leg on that, uh, I got a, I got another tail light. You notice this this one back here was uh, kind of bashed, but I, I got a spare with it. I got a, I got another tail light for that, so we can fix that. And then uh, you know when we went around the front, the um, the grill was broken. Uh, I got uh, got another grill for that. I don't know if they're trying to get into the hood and bash it out till they get to the latch. Who knows? But uh, yeah, you know, good thing I I found. Got a, I actually got a spare left and right grill, so but I just need this one for now. In the surrounds that go around this, I got actually got three of those. I got a left, right, and a spare right, maybe. I don't even remember. But um Yeah, got a crack in the windshield. That that sucks. That's not good because you they're not reproduced. But uh interior wise, um pretty practical actually. They're a hatchback car, so so we can find the keys here for it. Are they in the ignition? Yes, they are. Um, this is another one-handed circus trick for me here. Um, we'll get this unlocked. Now, if you had a third-gen Camaro or anything, you know what I'm talking about here. Those are those are dead. If I let go of it, it's going to fall. However, there's two new ones in that uh, pouch right there, so they still make them. That's good. You can see, like you said, I haven't done anything to this. Look at all the, you know, the nature that's that's falling down in here. Um, that's the bad thing with these red interiors like that. They get sun bleached and turn pink. Um, the seats folded down. This glass that's laying here does not go to that. That goes to the, my uh, my son's bravada. Um, Got some spare gaskets in here. Kind of see the dash layout from the front. I mean, it's it's a, it's a sporty little car, uh, especially with some power. Uh, it, it ought to be a blast. But uh, we got the, we got that much straightened out. Uh, we got the grills. We got a lot of the the pieces that we're missing. Um, and then the the other stuff that we don't. It's just you know standard fair GM stuff. You know all the hard parts. You know that's a good thing about. About GM, they didn't change stuff unless they have to. So, uh, you can kind of get stuff and fix it. Um, you know, this stuff's all flaked off. You know, I, this is not going to be a restoration for me, at least at this point. I don't, you know, I fall in love with, with everything. But, uh, you know, I just want to get this just going to where we can drive it around and uh, and use it. Um, you know, I'm not going to turn it into a truck, but... You know, with that fold-down rear seat, as you saw, it's in the fold-down position. And uh, I've got some stuff weighing on it, so I can't move it. But you can, you can put quite a bit of stuff in the back of those. Um, more than more than you think. I mean, this was the the crossover before. A hatchback was a crossover before anybody knew what a crossover was, really. Um, you know, you could, wasn't a station wagon. Wasn't a sedan or a coupe. You could uh, kind of get some get some utility out of it. Uh, no, no difference with the... With this little car here so uh let's start it up
Well, definitely in need of some tuning, um, but starts right up and gets the job done. Um, has some uh, side exit exhaust that I thought was kind of maybe bodged together, but it looks like it was pro done. I mean, it's got uh, got some pretty fancy welded rubber isolated hangers on it. So uh, not how I would have done it, but uh, uh, works pretty good nonetheless. Um, got the old um, Edelbrock Signature Series set up that I had on my very first car, my 69 Camaro. So that, that's kind of cool. Um, as you saw with the, the battery connections, definitely, uh, definitely something we need to uh, focus on, you know, with the, the screw and the negative terminal and a bunch of other BS there that... Uh, is kind of spooky but um really pretty solid otherwise um like i said somebody tried but uh you know what they say about best intentions um but it's a good package i mean you know you get a you get a small block chevy and a gm car i mean what can go wrong you know it's uh it's a good package uh people have been doing it for years we can uh we can make this work um got the Got the Edelbrock Performer carburetor on there too. Um, sorry about the camera work there, but uh, you know that's uh, based on the old Carter design. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, definitely a, a very streetable setup. Um, I think I told you earlier the uh, the tires on this are just are just wasted. I mean they're so bad, and so we're we're going to get rid of those and get something on there that we can we can use and drive. Um, got the, got a replacement hood on there. I don't know where it came from. It's, it, it fits, it's the right one, but it's got some, uh, you know, a little bit of some chinks in the armor, I guess you'd say on that. But, uh, you know, who cares? You know, we're, we're going to drive this thing. We're not going to try to, you know, turn it into a show car by any means. We just want to use it. Um, Would like to get it back to a manual one day, but that's not a priority. Um, probably we'll keep the wheels. Maybe, maybe try to get the fender flares and stuff looking better. Maybe make the interior a little more presentable. But um, other than that, I'm gonna use it as is. I, th I think it's pretty cool. Um, you may have seen, you know, we got a lot of vehicles in the Smith Motorworks feet, fleet. Excuse me, but, uh, you know, uh, I own them, but uh, my kids drive them. I mean, uh, the Fiero is my second oldest son's car. The Cutlass Convertible is my daughter's car. The Bravado is my youngest son's car, and uh, he doesn't need it right now, which has kind of been a, a, a good thing for me because he's a freshman at Purdue University. Boiler up. And... Uh, they can't have cars, but next year he'll need a car, so he's going to start driving it again, and uh, I'm going to need something, and uh, I got a lot of projects, but uh, most of them aren't really anything that you can daily. Used to used to daily my old Corvair quite a bit, which is up on the lift, and we still might, but uh, hey, man, I wanted one of these, so I got it. Here we are. Dare to be different. 79 Starfire Forenza. If you got one, if you know about one, let me know. Well, hey, I hope you liked that one. Maybe you learned something about these little cars. I sure like it a lot. Like I said, it's kind of on my list to uh, acquire one one day. Uh, used to be all over the place and you just don't see any anymore. Uh, Maybe isn't the smartest decision for a daily driver, but um, I've driven uh, driven a lot of stuff that probably isn't the best daily driver. I'll make it work. It's not too wild that we can't handle it, and uh, it's fun, and we got to dare to be different. So we'll see you next time on Smith Motorworks. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. Let me know what you think. I'm going to keep doing it regardless. Later.